approximately 99% of all internet traffic. From this video reaching your Instagram account to your family's WhatsApp group flows through a concealed network of undersea cables. Why is this significant? Because our modern way of life increasingly relies on these sleek subaquatic lines. But how exactly do they operate? And what does the future hold for them? Today, we'll delve into the depths to uncover how the internet traverses oceans. So fasten your seatbelt and welcome to Inside the Future. As per the authoritative submarine cable map website, there are presently 493 operational or actively under construction subsea internet cables. Crisscrossing the globe, these vary from the relatively modest 300-kilometer cable connecting Azerbaijan to Turkmenistan, beneath the Black Sea to the absolutely colossal 6,600-kilometer 6 Maria Cable that spans from Virginia Beach in the U.S. to Bilbao in northern Spain. Maria's weight is equivalent to that of 24 blue whales. This company is weaving this meandering superhighway across the world, and it now spans a staggering 1.5 million kilometers in total. While exact figures on the costs can be somewhat elusive, professional estimates suggest that a typical transoceanic cable can set you back a hefty 300 to 400 million dollars. It may seem like a substantial sum, considering that these cables aren't particularly thick, generally around the size of a garden hose. This includes protective layers of thixotropic geals surrounding the crucial fiber optic core, along with multiple plastic sheaths and copper wiring to power the system. Despite their slender appearance, these cables are capable of carrying a remarkable 100 gigabytes per second of data on average, with newer and upcoming cables pushing this capacity to an impressive 400 gigabytes per second. So, how can such substantial data volumes fit through these slim channels? A significant part of the answer lies in an incredibly advanced data management technique known as dense wavelength division multiplexing. In simple terms, dense wavelength division multiplexing allows data providers to utilize more than one wavelength of light to transmit information via optical fibers. Multiple wavelengths are employed simultaneously and layered resulting in astonishing data speeds. This complex process takes place at bustling data center, like landing sites at each end of the cable. These cables aren't just straightforward long wires though, approximately every 70 to 100 kilometers along the seabed. The cables are interspersed with repeaters. These repeaters essentially function as signal amplifiers, ensuring signal strength over extended distances. This is why the cables integrate copper conductors that carry up to 10,000 volts of direct current to power the repeaters. The process of laying these cables is quite intricate. They are initially coiled into massive cylindrical drums aboard specialized cable laying vessels. Extensive planning and charting, often taking up to a year, go into plotting the optimal transiatic route. Unsuitable locations for undersea cables include volcanic areas, earthquake-prone regions, mudslide-prone zones, or areas heavily frequented by fishermen. The cable is then carefully unspooled from the back of the ship at a leisurely pace of around 10 kilometers per hour. In case of adverse weather conditions, the ship's captain may decide to detach the cable, secure it to a buoy, and retreat to calmer waters. Once the storm subsides, the ship returns to the buoy to resume the cable laying process where it left off. Accidents and disruptions can indeed affect these cables. For instance, in 2012, Hurricane Sandy in the United States knocked out several vital transatlantic cables, causing network disruptions lasting for hours. Similarly, the Fukushima earthquake in Japan in 2011 had a similar impact on online connectivity. The vast majority of such disruptions, however, result from human negligence. Often involving trawler nets or ship's anchors going astray, cables located in proximity to the shoreline are considerably more vulnerable to such disturbances. Consequently, the closer a cable is to land, the more likely it is to be meticulously armored. 
Many of them are even buried in the seabed within lengthy dedicated trenches created using ship-drawn plows. Surprisingly, sharks have been spotted gnawing on Google's undersea cables. More sinisterly, the U.S. government has persistently cautioned about interference in the cables from hostile foreign powers, such as Russia or China. The geopolitical implications of undersea cables are equally intriguing. The Australian government intervened to prevent Chinese technology giant Huawei from installing a cable that would connect Australia with the Solomon Islands. The concern revolves around the possibility of China using the link to access Australia's sensitive internal networks. The ownership of these undersea cables is indeed an intriguing question. Historically, the expenses were typically covered by nations or quasi-national telecom providers. The largest owner of cables in the world remains AT&T from the United States, with a stake in approximately 230,000 kilometers of undersea cables. The second largest owner is China Telecom. Frequently, these cables are owned by groups or consortia comprising up to 50 separate owners, including tech companies, local government agencies, and other businesses. While this approach helps distribute the initial costs, it can become less practical when issues arise and no one can agree on responsibility for addressing them. In recent years, big tech companies have recognized that the potential for their growth is restricted by the existing undersea cable network. As a result, the overwhelming majority of investments in undersea cable infrastructure have come from companies such as Facebook, which currently owns nearly 100,000 kilometers of cables. Google possesses a similar amount, while Amazon has its extensive private network connecting the online giants, AWS data centers via cables spanning the Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, Mediterranean, Red Sea, and South China Sea, these tech giants often present these massive, environmentally disruptive infrastructure projects as contributions to civilization enhancement on their part. These tech companies are indeed shareholder-driven entities that recognize the significance of expanding the online population as the key to their continued growth. While you might wonder about alternatives like Starlink, the wireless internet envisioned by Elon Musk, it's crucial to remember that, for now, Cable technology remains by far the most cost-effective and efficient method for transmitting extensive data packets across vast distances at high speeds. Musk himself has indicated that Starlink is primarily targeted at individuals who presently lack access to high-speed fiber internet. However, the future remains uncertain, and the landscape may evolve significantly in the next decade or two. At present, the future of internet connectivity is still firmly tethered to undersea cables. Recently, Google and Facebook jointly announced an initiative to construct an undersea cable named Apricot, which will connect Singapore, Japan, Guam, the Philippines, Taiwan, and Indonesia by the year 2024. Additionally, a consortium led by Facebook recently funded the longest subaquatic cable ever, a colossal $1 billion 45,000-kilometer cable called to Africa. This cable will interconnect 33 nations. It's an intriguing thought to ponder whether humankind's ingenious undersea network will eventually appear as outdated as the telegraph. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this matter in the comments. If you liked this content, don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to our channel for more exciting updates on the tech world. This is inside the future.